So first of all, we'll make the faux stepper. So you want a piece of seven and a half by five. Along that seven and a half side, you're gonna score a seven. You want then just a piece of five by seven, just leave that as it is. And then you want this piece here, which is five by eight. Along the eight inch side, you're gonna score at half, two, three and a half, five and a half, and seven and a half. And then with this one, we need to create a mountain, valley, mountain, valley, and finish with a mountain. So you have that shape. So the two half inch tabs should both face up, and then you have this shape here. And that's what we're gonna stick inside. So if you've made any of my faux steppers, it's the same as that. But because it's a five by seven size, I've had to make the five by seven card blank as a deconstructed one. So you'll see how that will attach and we've got a top fold five by seven. However, if you've got shop brought of those, then you can just use that instead. So with this piece here first, just take a little wedge off of the edges there, just so they don't stick out. And I'm gonna use, I think I'm gonna use the construction glue actually for the tab, just so it's nice and strong. This cardstock's a little bit lighter than what I usually use. So just stick the five by seven piece over the tab there. Make sure that's all lined up. Give that a second to dry. Okay, so we've got our top fold five by seven. So now it's gonna to attach to these tabs like so, so we have that stepper inside. So again, I'm just gonna add some glue along there. I've done this so that the smaller step is at the front. You can change it if you want. This could be acetate on the front as well. Again, just fold that down. So it's all hidden inside and then just flip it over on that side. So the nice thing about this style with any of the faux steppers is they will naturally kind of pop up when it's taken out of the envelope. So you'll see already the spring on that. So from the side there, you can see you've got quite an interesting profile. Now mine's, like I said, it's a lighter weight. This is more like a 180. I've just cut this piece of four and three quarter by six and three quarter, and I'm gonna stick this on the back so I've got somewhere to stamp and write my message and I can decorate it a little bit further. I may well use a couple of the stamps and that's just gonna now really strengthen the back of that. And then once this is on the front, you wouldn't know that it was that lighter weight cardstock. Okay, so I'm gonna leave all that now to one side and we can start building another one of my favorites. And this is the terrific tortoise. So you can see here, all of the coloured images are dyes, all the black and white are your stamps. So you've got some really fun little sentiments there and then everything you need to build that very cute little tortoise. So I'm using the five by seven mechanism here. So you get the three dies, the main plate, which has, which has your four holes in the slot. You get your pull tab, which I've cut, and the arrow, which I've cut as well. I've cut two of these, I always do, and stick them together and that way you've got a nice strong little pulley there. With this one, I've used this scene here, lovely, first time I've done this five by seven pack and it's so cute. And these backgrounds will go with so many of my past collections as well. So I'm hoping that lots of you will enjoy this. So it's five by seven, four each of six designs, 190 GSM. So I've cut that using the main die plate. But again, because it's a paper, that's not gonna be strong enough to hold the puppet, you know, the mechanism when you pull it. So I've also cut it again in white and just stuck those together. Use the construction glue again. This is always linked below my videos. It's the Kalau construction glue. But again, that's nice and strong now. So prepare those pieces. And now what I'm gonna do is just talk you through, and I've done this for every puppet in all of the videos, how to put this all together. So I like to lay mine out on a magnetic sheet so I can kind of see already that that is, you know, the tortoise. So I've got his head and his face all at the top there. You've got his neck, arms, everything you need for the body, and then his legs. And then you've got like the rocks here, the ball and some lettuce leaves as well. You've got stencil detail as well. So you'll see, for example, on the leg here. So when you cut that, keep it in the die. Oh, wrong one. There we go. Keep it in the die. And then I just used a darker green ink and a sponge, a little blending sponge and just and dab the ink into there and then it transferred. So you've got that detail. And then you just rinse that under the tap. So you can see that on the arms and the legs. And then like the lettuce here, you can see you've got that same detail there. So just use your inks and you can get some stenciled effects there. And again, with the rocks, it just gives you a little bit of definition there. 
So first of all, we'll start with the body. So I've cut the main shell in this brown, this one here, then the oval I've cut in the green, and then the underbelly there I've cut in that lighter color. Okay, so that's those ones used. Then you've got your detail here, and that's gonna go over the top. You may want to have a sentiment stamped in his belly, so I would just leave that piece off. So we'll leave the ball and the rock, so I'll go through all of that and the lettuce. Leave all that there. Then I've got the head. And use your image on here as well, because every die is shown here. So you can see that the head, which way it's meant to be. So just, you want that kind of dipped part there. That's like the bottom, that's his chin. And then you've got this funny shaped one here. And you can just see it in the image here. And that's gonna go behind this piece. So behind the cream piece there. Or the circle, to be honest, it doesn't really matter. Just one of those, like so. And then you'll see his head can be attached. It's like you could have it quite high, so he's really sticking his head out, like really curious. So he's got that stretched neck look. Then you've got your eyes. I've been using my pickup tool a lot for this project, for these puppets because it's got the wax here. It just picks up all these pieces so well. So you see one of them's bigger than the other, but you can see exactly where you need to position them. So actually before they stick down, you want this one and you'll see it's that piece there. So I'm going to pop that one down and then you can see like down into this part is where the large eye goes like so. And then that's smaller. Oh, like, like that. Okay, and then again, you've got the black here, very tiny, and then you've got the smallest white pieces, and they're all in this die here, so you can pass that through, so pass it through in white, and you could colour all the pieces in, but I pass it through in white, then in black to get those pieces, and then you can see the tiniest little ones there, but if you just want to cheat, if you've got a gel pen, I use this one here, it's brilliant, it's the Jelly Roll, and it's the size 10, then just use that. But it is there as well. And you can see the head, the neck and that piece like I explained. You've also then got the tongue, which is so small and it's got a bit of stencil detail and it's just here. So I just stenciled a little bit of the pink in and you'll see you can just pop it underneath that bit there. I'll just leave it there for now. And then also here you've got your nostrils. So the smallest little green here. Again, I'm just going to use my... A little pokey tool just to kind of show you where they need to go i just need to move that one around but you can see you know roughly where they need to go and then we've got the legs nice and easy one on each side there and then the arms like so <laughs> his face is looking completely odd right now but it will all make sense just follow the layout there and you can see he looks quite cheeky a little bit mis mischievous you've got little feet here as well i might try and see if i can stamp those on the back and maybe with his little den there as well so i'm going to get all of that stuck down You would have just seen me, I just put a bit of glue, well, it looks like a lot, but I just spread out some glue there on my hand just to attach that piece. You could also die cut it on double-sided tape, but don't do this if you've got sensitive skin. I would just like to say that because I would hate for anybody to get a reaction to the glue. Before, I just want to talk you through this. So with the tiny little tongue there, I'm just going to add the smallest amount of glue on the edge, just on the end then, and I'm just using my tweezers here just to pick that up. And I'm just going to attach it under this piece. Because his mouth is just kind of, you know, under here. There we go. So his little tongue's sticking out. And now I can stick that down onto here. So you want the tongue just coming down into that, that dipped part of the face there. So now I'm just going to continue sticking the eyes down. And again, like I said, keep reverting to your image here because you can see the black, it's slightly over to the right hand side. So you have more white here. So that's what gives him that cheeky look like he's looking over, you know, to one side. And then I'm just going to use my pen here and just add a little dot there and there. There we go. Straight away now we've got that fun expression. 
And then for the tiniest bits, I just use a little bit of glue there. And I'm just going to pop two dots there for his nostrils. And then to attach his neck, just a little glue there. Okay, so leave him now to one side. You want to take your pull tab and your four limbs here, so your arms and legs, and you'll need eight brads. And you want the five mil brads. The eight mil are going to be a bit too big. So I've got mine here. They don't have to be the same colour, but... You know, you might, if you look to the side, be able to see a little bit of the brad. If it's the same kind of colour, then it's going to be hidden. So you're going to take, I always work with the, an arm first, and you're going to pop a brad through the outer hole. Okay, you've got your two holes on these. You want to work on the outer one. And then you're going to pop it through the top right there, for, in my case. Just open up your brad then. And I like to use my pokey tool and just open it out over. That way the brad isn't flat against the card and the arm there, you can see, moves really freely. So just repeat that on the others. Okay, so now you should have something like this, which looks very odd, but they should all move really freely. Then you want to take the main mechanism here and your other four brads, and now you're going to add them to the other hole on the limb. Oh, like so. And then you're going to attach it onto here now you also want to make sure you thread that through which i always forget but you can see it's still all easy to move and then again open it out on the back and just fold it over your tool there you see how that's raised it's just going to stop anything scratching and you can do a test there and see how that all works nicely so again just repeat that on the others okay so just do a test it should all move really nicely now we can attach him. So I like to use a couple of my foam squares here. You just want to cut some strips about a quarter inch wide. And you want to double these up. You might need to add another layer on top as well. You basically you need to match the height of these brads now for him to attach to. So I've just folded that over. And then with this all in this down position, so make sure your tab's pulled down. You don't want to add this right now when it's like that. So just keep it in this position. And you want to stick this just under the arm and next to that bar there. And you want to just check that nothing's going to hit against that. So the leg's got plenty of space to move because some of the legs are, are wider, a bit thicker, so they might hit. So you might have to move it, but just, um, just test it each time. And then again, just fold that over. And now I can just place this one down in the same position as that one. Again, just check it all. And then you want to add another just along the top of that slot there. So make sure that's down, you've got all your foam there. Okay, and then you wanna make sure that the bottom just covers the bottom of those brads and his head just, just covers. I might have to bring that foam down if I just angle him a little bit that way, there we go. And again there, just make sure that's all secure like so. And now you'll see how cute does he look? I've got a little bit there. Can you see? Well, you can see more of it actually when you look in. I think I might just push that under a little bit. If you don't like the white there of the foam, you can just use a green marker. But you'll see there now how that all works. He looks so cute. He's so happy. It's like he's come out of hibernation and he's happy to see the world. So this is now going to attach onto the front here. So I'm going to add some foam just down through the middle here. And just focus on your border. You should be the same all the way around, like so. And when that's folded down, that will all go in your envelope. And then what I did is I, is it on here? Where's my sentiment gone? Oh, just down here. So I've stamped the slow and steady ring wins the race. And I wanna have this right along the bottom. So I'm just gonna cut this as close to the writing as I can get it. So I'm hoping you'll still see a little bit of the, the hills behind. I might have to go a little bit thinner even on this side. Now you could heat emboss straight onto that, but do that obviously before you, you know, stick anything on. So I'm just gonna go a little bit closer there. If I wanted it to kind of blend in. Yeah, that's gonna work still, but you still see that detail. And I'm gonna just pop that up on a little bit of foam as well. And then I was gonna add a couple of the rocks behind so you probably end up hiding the the uh the hills there anyway but just pop that one up there that looks really sweet and then I just thought I could have 
one of like the rocks there and his ball or maybe his ball could be yeah i might have his ball up in the air so it's like he's playing with it so what i did with that is i cut it in orange and then you'll see it will cut this outer ring and all the detail so i then cut it again in brown and then just piece those pieces all on top and then i've just used my accent glaze so it's got a nice shine and then maybe he can hold a lettuce leaf as well i think that will look quite cute so we'll just pop a little glue there he can hold that lettuce leaf there we go again just give him a test oh what you would do if you have anything like that where it would catch all you need to do is just add a little curve to the ends of or you know to the, to the legs what that actually does is it just gives them a bit more i don't know makes them come to life a little bit more just lifts them lifts them off the page so just yeah just curl in fact i'll do that with all of it i do think it looks quite nice there we go yeah <laughs> and you could also i've said this in a few of them you don't have to have all the limbs moving you could stick them right behind here and just have one of them and then it would look like he's waving you know just have one arm so have a play around there's loads you can do with these i think that looks super cute i am going to go in there and just use some green um, marker just so it's not so white and then accent glaze let's just add a little well i say a little i think what i'm going to do is add some on his tongue Just use your paper tool to kind of spread it out. There we go. And then I think I'm going to cover each of these sections. There you go. So you can see all that glaze now. So just give that some time to dry. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial from me today, showing you how to, you know, have that faux stepper look using the gorgeous, terrific tortoise. Yeah, definitely put a smile on someone's face. So thank you as always for watching today. I'll have some other puppet tutorials coming up now and all of the product that I've used will be linked in the description box below the video. If you've enjoyed today, please give me a thumbs up. It really does help out the channel and I'll be back again soon with more fun tutorials. Take care. Bye.